Hi guys, Erin Bradley here. And thanks as always for tuning in to the Pursuing Freedom podcast. I have a solo cast for you today, which means yours truly. And the reason for that is that I have a very important message for each and every one of you who's listening today. And the message is simple, okay? We are eight weeks into the coronavirus pandemic as I'm recording this episode. And the message I have for you and one that I'm focusing on personally in my own life and business is simple. It's it's this, wherever you were before has no bearing on where you go from here. This pertains to you if you were a brand new real estate agent or if you have been in the business a long time and you're a seasoned veteran, wherever you were before has no bearing on where you go from here. Now is the time to revisit your why, to revisit the goals that you had set coming into 2020 and ask yourself why. Because Whether you were at the top of your game or whether you were struggling to get your business off the ground, the whole world has been throwing a curveball. We are all facing uncertain times. And we've been forced to reevaluate and to slow down and to pause and to reflect and to look ahead. And I have seen far too many real estate professionals, lenders, you name it who have been operating their business and their life on autopilot for far too long. And I'm telling you that now is the time to revisit where you want to go from here. One of my favorite affirmations that I think I read in the Miracle Morning book is where you are is a result of who you've been, but where you go depends entirely on who you choose to be starting today. And I think that this is extremely powerful for each of us to consider that where we are today as a result of who we've been and where we go depends on who we want to be. Who do you want to be going forward? I was texting with a girlfriend of mine and I said, I'm either evolving as a human being during this time or I've lost my mind. But either way, I like the new version of myself better. I've never been more present with the people that matter to me. And when I say present, I mean emotionally, mentally present and in the space connected when I'm having a conversation with somebody. Because in the past, I know I'm not alone when I say that I've been physically present in a million places while mentally a million miles away, while mentally preoccupied, distracted, consumed, anxious, stressed, overwhelmed. But for the past eight weeks, we've all started to learn how to not feel rushed and to not have to be cramming so much into every single day. And for some of us, the slowdown was disconcerting. And then I think over time, a lot of us started to kind of lean into this new pace of life. And so the question I have for each of you and for myself is where do we go from here? You know, what is going back to normal look like? And do I want to go back to the normal that I used to have? Or do I want to create a new normal, one where... I am behind the driver's seat in my business, operating my business in such a way that it supports my lifestyle goals. The idea is that we should better design our business to create a plan, one where we clarify our priorities first, what really matters to us in our life, and then set boundaries, learn to honor them, so that we can actually enjoy the freedom and flexibility we were seeking when we became self-employed to begin with. Because again, wherever you were in your journey, were you permitting yourself the enjoyment of the freedom and flexibility you were seeking when you became a self-employed 100% commissioned person? Or were you allowing yourself to be overconnected and overcommitted? Did you feel compelled to be constantly checking your phone? Were you constantly checking emails? Because if that's the case, if that's how you were operating your business and your life before, then the question is, how was that working out for you? And were you permitting yourself the enjoyment of the freedom and flexibility you've been seeking all along? If not, then the goal is to design your business 
to support the lifestyle you, vision you had when you started. Rather than allowing the business, the rat race, the hamster wheel to rob you of your ability to be present in each and every interaction that matters to you, both personally and professionally. I was thinking about a conversation I had last week with a realtor friend who participated in my group coaching program. And her story is so similar to mine in that she struggled for years to get her business off the ground. She struggled with sales. And finally, because she's a genuine, caring, loving soul, her business took off. And because her business was built on caring and serving and her genuine desire to please others, when her business took off to the tune of closing more than 60 transactions a year without any support, without any systems in place, burning out and essentially sucking it up at the top of her game, surviving success, as I like to call it and never feeling present with the people that matter to her, she basically has just been riding on this hamster wheel indefinitely for years. And when I spoke with her last week to check in, she said to me, I don't want to go back to living that way. I've decided I am not going back to living that way. And so she's actively redesigning her business to better support her ability to be the mom and the wife and the friend and the human that she wants to be going forward. She was losing herself on the hamster wheel, genuinely pained by the inability to slow down, but propelled by the combined fear of letting people down, the fear of losing the success she's worked so hard to create, the fear of ever going back to struggling like she was. And so, In her best months, she's essentially sucking it up. And I just don't believe that's how it should feel. That's not what we were seeking. So this is why I created an online program to help you explore what really matters to you today, to organize your business, to enjoy the fruits of your success, to enjoy success. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. It should feel manageable. It should feel like you're actually in control of the business you're creating without trading your energy, your happiness, your health, or your relationships. The program is called Balanced Growth because I don't want you to put your dreams aside and I don't want you to forego growth or financial freedom. It's not one or the other. It's not, well, in order for me to make the kind of money that I want to make, I just have to suck it up. I just have to survive. I just have to get through it because what you're you're essentially saying to yourself is that it's going to slow down again and then I'll go back to jo- enjoying my life. And that's not how it should feel. So the idea here is that you can take this time to ask yourself the important questions of what kind of hours do you want to work? And what kind of income do you want to enjoy? And how much business, how much volume, how many transactions does it take to generate that level of revenue? And if that's your wish and your goal, and I would encourage you to expect that whatever you dream about is available to you, then I would ask you, how do you plan for that success better? And if that sounds like, oh man, that would be amazing. I would love to close that kind of business. then don't say, I would love to close that kind of business, say to yourself, I'm going to create that level of success. But in order to do it, I need to plan for it. I need to know what are my gifts? What am I good at? What do I enjoy? And what are the activities that drain me and deplete me? And how do I surround myself with better systems, better support in order to be able to enjoy the journey? Because as I do more transactions, I do more of all the tasks. I do more of all the activities. And if I'm doing those activities and tasks in a reactive and haphazard way, then I'm allowing my energy to be sapped. And when you do that, you lose, you lose the energy, you lose the joy in the process, and it becomes a grind. And the business can feel like a grind, and it can be stressful whether you're overwhelmed with volume and you're bringing in great income or whether you're at the bottom of the valley trying to get to the top of the mountain. 
whether you're at the top of the mountain or the bottom of the valley, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have systems, if you don't know what you're actually good at and what you enjoy and organize your day in such a way that you bring the highest energy, most magnetic version of yourself to the most important interactions in your day, then it's going to, it's going to feel like a grind. And I don't believe that that's what we were seeking when we took the leap of faith, when we forego the steady paycheck in pursuit of entrepreneurship and and we risk the 100% commission. I don't think we were seeking a grind. There's a better way, okay? Now, if you go to the website, pursuingfreedom.com forward slash resources, everything I mentioned on this podcast is available as a free download. So you can work through those tools on your own and implement them in your own life and business. The program, Balanced Growth, the online program, that's intended to help you really do a deep dive to get clear on who you are, on what your values are, on what's important to you today, which is going to be different than what was important to you a year ago and different from what's important to you a year from now, because we as humans are evolving. So just because there's certain tasks or activities that you did to grow your business five years ago, just because you enjoyed that, those activities then doesn't mean that you necessarily enjoy them today or that you are necessarily good at those activities. So it's, it's designed to help you find the clarity, get the focus, organize your schedule in such a way that you are operating at your highest at your best and in your zone of genius for the majority of your day so that you can bring that high energy version of yourself to the important interactions. And when you come home, you're still feeling that high energy for the people that matter to you in your personal life. And then to simplify so that you can simplify your efforts to maximize your results so that you can do a little bit less in order to do a lot more. There's a science to simplifying your efforts in order to maximize your results. There's no need to go back to arbitrarily filling your days with busyness. And my my suspicion is that this is likely going to be one of the greatest outcomes of this horrible tragedy, is that most people are not going to want to resume the level of chaos and busyness and overconnectedness and overcommitted that we were operating at prior to this forced pause. Just yesterday, I was talking with a gal who just got licensed four months ago, and she's participating in one of my group coaching programs. And she was talking about how she struggles with the traditional sales strategies. And we were discussing the fact that there's not one sales strategy. There's not one formula for success. And anyone who says there is, if, if you, for example, you take a, a coaching program or you, you attend a seminar and they say, if you just do A, B, and C, you will succeed. Well, what if A, B, and C are activities that don't bring you joy and you're not good at? So essentially what happens is you say to yourself, well, they said I should do that. So I'll do it. I'll muscle through. I'll check the boxes. And in some cases, We just don't do it at all because it's not in alignment with who we are as a human being. It's not in alignment with our natural born gifts, skills, talents, passions. And so that becomes this unchecked box that moves from one day to the next. The things that we should be doing, the things we tell ourselves we should be be doing because somebody else said it, it's something we should be doing without actually knowing who we are as a human being. So the business feels like a grind. We muscle through the activities they tell us we should do. And sometimes we get some results. And I personally did this. I operated my business like this for four years. And it was a grind. And I got by. And I survived. But it wasn't joyful. It wasn't magnetic. It wasn't fun. So what if the money and the deals could come as a mere byproduct of living your life in alignment with who you are, your values? and intentionally providing value for people that truly bring you joy. I'm telling you, it's possible. For years, I sucked it up and I did the work. I hustled and I tried everything and I was getting by. But honestly, I can't say that it was fun. It was more like desperate and often painful. 
When I realized that the goal isn't to get deals and instead the goal is to give value to a target market that brings me joy, my tribe, and then see the business start to take off. But the journey of running a successful business is just that. It's a journey. You have to constantly step back, pause, reflect, and ask yourself what's working and reevaluate and redirect your efforts. You need to stay in the driver's seat instead of getting caught as a passenger on a speeding train about to go off the rails. So what I'm helping this gal who's only four months into the business realize is that she can design her success strategy and it will be personal to her, okay? And it's fun to see that. It's fun to see somebody embrace that philosophy early on instead of doing what I did, which was to just get by. For four or five years of my journey, it was just getting by. And the thing is that, like I said before, just because some activity worked for you in the past or brought you joy in the past doesn't inherently mean it still serves you today. Just last year, I did an experiment to focus on subtraction because I had a great coach who told me back in 2015 that I needed to do less in order to do more. And so for the past five years, I have embraced that philosophy of doing less to do more. And all that means is that you ask yourself, how do I feel emotionally when I look at the things on my to-do list? How do I feel emotionally when I look at the commitments on my calendar? Do you get that pit in your stomach, that little sense of dread or that feeling of like, oh God, I still have to do that thing? Those are the activities you should be thinking about subtracting somehow, some way. Either asking yourself, is it important? Do I need to do it at all? Is there someone else who could do it for me? Is there someone else who would enjoy it and be good at it and could take that off my plate? Because the more you subtract, the more surge of energy you get that you can then apply to those other activities and commitments that really matter to you today. Again, it's about today. Because where you are today is a result of who you've been, but where you go depends on who you choose to be starting today. So last year, as I mentioned, I did this little experiment and I decided to reevaluate once again, what activities do I love to do and am I good at? And I picked two, two activities because simplicity plus consistency equals results. And by setting some boundaries, creating some rules, deciding when I was going to do the activities that work for me, which days during which windows of time, without interruption, without distraction, without excuses, we saw our volume go from three closings in February to nine in March to 12 in April and ultimately 17 in June. So where you are four months from now could be radically different as long as you decide what you want, make sure it's in alignment with who you are and what really matters to you today in your life. Commit to taking massive action. And I don't mean doing more, more, more. I mean doing what works for you, what you're good at and what you enjoy with consistency at a predetermined time of the day and day of the week and week of the month and month of the year and without excuses and without apology. And without distractions or interruptions, to learn to set boundaries and to honor them, but to set those boundaries around your priorities for once. We all set boundaries and we turn off our phone all the time for everyone else's agenda, for doctor's appointments and client meetings. But how often do we say, this is important to me in my personal life, or this is important to me in my business, and I'm going to turn my phone off and set boundaries around this time to ensure that I create the results that I want and that I create the life that I've always dreamed of having supported by this very organized business that's 100% in alignment with me as a human being and individual where I am today. So it's about customizing your plan for success. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you willing to accept the fact 
that where you are four months from now could be radically different from where you are today if you decide to show up and become the CEO of your business and design it to align with who you are. I challenge you to use this time to think like the CEO, to expect that you are 100% capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken the risk to begin with. So you need to expect that success. And then you need to define what does success look like for you? Because success could be monetary. It could be time freedom. It could be travel. It could be relationships. It could be health. It could be anything. It's what it matters to you. What does success mean to you? Expect it and then plan for it. And if you need help getting clear on how to set these goals that are in alignment with you and your heart center, that are in alignment with your true wishes and deepest desires, that that match the idea of wouldn't it be amazing if, if you need help getting in a getting clarity on how to set those goals from the heart and not from the head where they're shrouded in negative limiting beliefs about why that's not realistic or why that's not probable or why that's too difficult. I can help you with that. The program online is called Balanced Growth. It's at pursuingfreedom.com forward slash coaching. The free resources are available at forward slash resources. And you can always contact me with questions. I'm here to support you in any way possible because I know that absolutely anything is possible because I continue to test it and experiment it and have fun with it and watch everyone I know do the same. So believe in yourself first. You took the leap of faith for a reason. Don't give up. Wherever you are today, keep going, but take the wheel. Don't just hope for it. Don't wish for it. Plan for it. Set some boundaries and honor those boundaries. The future can be absolutely beautiful if we take the time to pause, dig deep, and really make some commitments to ourselves that the future will be better. Okay? As always, I love and appreciate you. Please contact me with feedback. Please leave a review if you are enjoying the podcast. It helps us continue to attract great guests and it helps the content get found so that we can continue to support one another on our journeys to designing the lifestyle of our dreams supported by the the business of our dreams. So as always, I appreciate you. Make it an awesome day and I'll see you next time.